Fortnite is not dying. That's what this YouTuber seems to think. They posted this video two weeks ago and it got 146,000 views. I'm gonna react to it for the first time and I'm gonna give you guys my opinion. Did you know Fortnite made more money in 2021 than at its supposed peak in popularity? It's that is not true. Either. In 2021, but they also have a lot Fortnite more ways to make money million and a lot more skins in 2018 than they did in 2018. Possible? Every YouTuber, streamer, website has been saying that Fortnite is dead, or at least massively criticizing it. And despite the common opinion that Fortnite has completely fell off, the CEO is still rolling around in piles of money that seems to be getting larger every year. So I think uh, real quick, some communities in Fortnite have died. Different communities, different streaming communities, different content communities have fallen off. The player base seems to be still very strong and the amount of revenue they're making seem, seems to still be strong. But if you're a part of a community or if all your friends quit the game, it's very easy to feel like that the game is dying, even if it's not. And that's what happens when you're kind of like in a bubble, when you're like, you know, observing things like Fortnite's death. you don't play something anymore doesn't mean it isn't making money. There is no argument that Fortnite is still near its peak cultural impact. Creators aren't solely focused on the game anymore. It isn't being talked about on every late night show. But what Fortnite has done is cornered the market on a certain demographic. While not everyone is talking about the game, Fortnite's user base continues to grow without even needing to have the same cultural push it once did. Or its viewership. active players in 2018 was around 78.3 million. When compared to today, you may be surprised to know that it is actually 5 million active monthly players higher than at its supposed peak. That's this crazy. Means that somehow the game has given itself a creative has to have something to do with that than before. One thing about Fortnite that the entire community seems to forget is at the end of the day, Epic Games don't really care about whether or not streamers play the game or if YouTubers are enjoying it. They but they should a little bit. It does affect the attitude around the game and streaming and you know youtube communities are a big part of gaming culture in my opinion and they should care a little bit maybe it's not the, the biggest problem to, to, to worry about but it's definitely something care about making money and growing a user base is a great way to make money in the age of the internet it is easy to assume that just because something is unpopular in the communities you're in that it must be unpopular across the board realistically fortnite is a children's game demographically the player mm. base is continuing to grow not Depends. based on online popularity but because parents are seeing it as an option for a safe environment for their kids to game in a similar comparison would be roblox you don't need to be some kind of economic genius to know that roblox is printing a boatload of money however you also don't need to be a genius to know that its target demographic is not the esports community True. streamers or the youtube world it's a game designed to give kids a safe place to True. game and make money while doing it Fortnite but i don't think that's the case for Fortnite exactly like it, it can it can tackle that demographic but it also goes beyond that we see that with some of the uh, more mature collaborations that they've done uh with mature ips like you know star wars or uh the last no they didn't do the last of us but you get what i'm saying managed to take that model and apply it to itself meaning they don't have to worry about the critical opinions of the gameplay from the most vocal people on twitter remember the majority of the player base is kids who judging by the player counts think the game is still great however you won't see these kids positive opinions going viral on reddit but these kids opinions along with their parents matter most to the growth and profitability of the game whatever the model that is true. a growing player base means one thing for epic's bottom line and that's pro Profits. The overall earnings for Fortnite are broken down on a year-to-year -year basis. 2018, which was the perceived peak of the game, saw overall revenue of $5.4 billion. 2019 saw a big drop to $3.7 billion. But mm. as of 2020, it began its recovery up to $5.1 billion. And in 2021, it reached a new record of $5.8 billion. And in 2022, Epic Games' revenue was projected to reach $6.27 billion. Jeez. And they're expected to keep increasing this number with projected and, and and honestly in, in the next few years I, I could see them hitting eventually 10 billion just because once crave 2.0 really kicks in and there's like game modes that spawn in fortnite that become popular or viral people will be coming to play fortnite but they won't even touch battle royale but they will be playing and if there's skins and cosmetics and things you can purchase in creative as well like it's just gonna be a money printing machine 
projections of $7.6 billion revenue by 2025. Obviously, revenues are not all profit, but assuming no drastic changes in their business costs, it means Fortnite, as of recently, has actually been making more profits than ever. All of this is also without a huge moneymaker that is in the middle of legal issues, which is Fortnite. Oh, they don't even have Fortnite Apple. Mobile You're right. Additional $1 billion of revenue in They're missing out on as Apple. Today, Fortnite Mobile is currently operating. If it comes back, they're going to make even more. Back, as it's been banned from the How many store, iPad uh, kids are not playing Fortnite right now? They're playing Roblox because Fortnite's not. There's so many, bro. Every, anytime I go visit my family, little cousins, they're on their iPad, they're on their iPhone, and they're all playing Roblox games or like Stumble Guys or whatever other mobile games. They, they can't play Fortnite products. That puts their record-breaking $5.8 billion year in 2021 in an even better light, considering a huge chunk of a business segment literally can't generate revenue in the same way it used to. Mm -hmm. How does Epic Games make so much money from this game, still to this day, over five years after its release? Well... The main way Fortnite is able to monetize this massive user base Cosmetics? is, of course, the microtransaction okay. model. Fortnite operates very similar to a funnel. It is free to play, so tons of people are willing to take a chance to play such a popular game. Once you have them investing time into the game, you can take advantage of their commitment to the game by offering microtransactions. <laughs> Okay, but it's not as malicious as this guy's making it seem because the microtransactions are not inherently adv advantageous. You don't really have a significant advantage. Like some games will put in things that really force you to buy. And even if it's not like super pay to win, it's still like pretty aggressive in the way they, they make it kind of almost required if you want to be competitive. But yeah, Fortnite, I mean, it's it's really skins. And, and the fact that they can collaborate with any IP makes it got the game a little free. bit more intriguing. They tend to be more inclined to spend money on cosmetic items. But in the long run, players will often end up spending more money on these items than a paid game would have cost them. For example, True. in 2020, the I spent a lot on Fortnite. A Fortnite player was $85. That's wow. 25 more than a game would usually cost. And I did not know it was that high. million active players a month, it isn't hard to see how the numbers can stack up. Fortnite isn't the inventor of this model, but they really took it to the next level. They're, no one before. They're not the inventors of like buying cosmetics, but they 100% showed the most efficient and best way to do it. Because like in a lot of other games, people do not care about skins. Like some games, people do. CS:GO, maybe Call of Duty, uh, maybe Apex. Like some games, like skins are you know more popular. In some games like they just fail in fortnite skins are everything it's how you define your personality as a player and then the fact that they have all these different ips that's where things start to get a little ridiculous because now you got people from different gaming genres like just like wanting to buy a skin even if they don't play fortnite literally every single item you could think of you can pay them for weapon skins character skins dances backpacks pickaxes music and battle passes the thing is though it works. Microtransaction based games make most of their money off the top 10% of their user base. That's <laughs> every product. I feel yes, attacked. Yes, there's the benefit of the X million people who spend $9.99 a season on the Battle Pass, but there's way more money to be made off Jim with his mom's credit card spending $300 a day on the item shop. No now, way. The huge benefit of selling digital items is that your margin is massive. Most companies have a certain amount of cost that they have to factor into their sale price. The only they just have to factor the design that they the game itself is animation done, is in it. graphic design and modeling. Yep. Let's say a skin costs them $20,000 in cost to produce. Although, I wouldn't be surprised if it was much less than that. At a price of $6, they'd only need to sell 3,300 of these skins to break even. With an average monthly player base of 84 million, there is no way they can't do that. After that point, every single sale is 100% profit. Mm. There is no repeated cost on that skin. That $20,000 was a one-time investment. If they have a skin they can that sells sell the skin over times, and over and over Four million nine hundred ninety-six thousand seven hundred of those were pure profits. There is almost no other business that can do this. Now, if you think about the fact that even NFTs average, pulled it off, eighty-five percent of Fortnite players have admitted to purchasing DLC. It would be almost impossible for them to lose money on this model. With only one skin released per month at five dollars, they could sell skins to only 0.0001% of their player base and still be profitable. Wow. The other huge growth engine Fortnite has used to boost their economics is partnerships. When you're one of the biggest games in the world, Epic Game Store. I, I remember when it first launched. 
launched and I was like, this isn't gonna be a big deal. And now there's like so many games from the Epic Game Store, it's ridiculous. The Avengers, Travis Scott, League of Legends, Stranger Things, the list goes on literally forever. This is a genius strategy because everyone wins. The brands get to build hype with their product via Fortnite and Fortnite builds hype for itself via the product. On top mm -hmm. of that, they get a majority cut of whatever product is sold from the crossover and they didn't have to do much of the marketing. If you come in and buy a Batman skin because you love Batman, Fortnite didn't have to develop that IP. Yeah. They didn't have to build that customer recognition, but they get the profit regardless. To True. break down their demographics just a bit further, 25% of preteens in the United States say that they play Fortnite. That's an insane amount that, of market share for a group that. That's crazy. Because like when I was when I was a preteen, I was playing RuneScape, bro. Like I was like one or two people in my class who actually played the same game as me. Card. You have to realize that this demographic and their other major 18 to 24 crowds are the most susceptible to marketing. This is why it is so genius to do collaborations with brands that already have a built up customer loyalty. I don't know why he used TG. He doesn't have a skin. At least maybe not yet. Hopefully he gets one. <laughs> I'm just wondering why. <laughs> to reduce their advertising costs and boost their margins. It also makes is he leaking TG skin cheaper when it doesn't have to be all done from step one of the creative board. The concerts they do are primarily geared towards their target demographics. And while we've never been in an epic board meeting, it's our guest. I don't think they make that much money off the concerts though. I feel like the concert is like a one time thing and they probably have to plan a lot and do a lot of animation for a one time thing. Sure, a lot of players hop on for the concert but that's more of like i honestly see the concert is more like just hype and community building i don't see it as like a profit thing key strategy in epic games customer retention imagine your biggest nostalgia game the one that makes you happy every time you think of it for many people that's call of duty sure call of duty has been in its dumps recently but the amount of people who still spend money on it due to the fact it's been a part of their life is insane what do you think Fortnite is trying to do with these live events and collabs? Become a part of their demographics core memories or give them good times they'll remember regardless of gameplay. If you and your friends hopped on and had an amazing time at the Travis Scott concert, it didn't matter that the last update was garbage. You weren't there for the game and if anything, it would make you view the game in a better light. That's true. the event and made memories with your friends. All of this is great for the economic... Those events are the games. most memorable player base moments. The People are spending even more money on the game than ever before. However, that doesn't necessarily necessarily mean smooth sailing from here. Between expensive legal battles with Apple and a massive fine from the FTC recently, there are expenses draining their bank. They had to spend 500 accounts. million Estimates on that fine. Between legal fees, lost revenue, and the app store being taken away from Epic, they could have lost billions. But going back to the general hype around the game, it is important to acknowledge that on the content side of things, Fortnite is definitely not doing too well, which is yeah. likely part of the reason why people claim it is dying. There are metrics we can use to see the amount of streams being watched for people. Streams are down a lot and people don't really want to watch pubs anymore because there's, they're very repetitive and people have seen them for, I mean, even arena. What I'm saying is people don't want to just watch the normal gameplay. Viewership is a little bit higher during tournaments, during new seasons, during update days, but that's about it. Fortnite hasn't really adapted or changed much in the content or live stream space. We're hoping with Crave 2.0 things get a little bit better, but it's going to take some time. And on YouTube, a lot of people have fallen off like we have been able to hold on and still grow and a few other youtubers have as well but there is way more youtubers who used to do fortnite who have just completely fallen off and do not get even a fraction of the viewership they usually do particular games and at its peak over 1.6 billion hours of fortnite stream and what's interesting is they're not being replaced by new youtubers usually usually that's what happens like new youtubers come in and they replace some of the older guys who have kind of like are not trying as hard but we're not even seeing that happen yet or like it happens in other games we're, what we're seeing is we're just seeing kind of like youtubers either dwindle down or just kind of hold on like like myself and some others have but we're not seeing like a new generation of Fortnite youtubers step up and like really explode besides maybe like people who create shorts content but that's that's a compl i mean that's not really that's not really what we're, we're, where we're looking when it comes to like the success of of a game's uh audience were watched 
That was down to 1.1 billion in 2021. Sure, that's still quite a bit of watch time, but a third of it is gone. You can also take a look at the most popular Fortnite YouTubers and see that many have either gone down in views or switched games entirely. This may not be affecting the business bottom line, but its decline is undeniable. Beyond just the streaming numbers, it also has been on a consistent decline when looking at Google Trends. The Google Trends is, is not down, a good indicator. Profitability is up. Like who's well, Googling is Fortnite is at this these point, days? Fortnite has almost entirely separated itself from the standard growth engines most games use. New games today come out and spend millions to get the biggest streamers to play for a few hours. Fortnite has turned their products into something that advertises itself to its biggest and most important demographic. Yeah, Fortnite doesn't really doesn't do a lot of sponsored stuff. If they are surging on Google Trends. They don't really need to. That money pipeline is still wide open. The reality is, the game may be dead in the influence sense, but as a business, which is what Fortnite was really made to be, a tool for a business, it is more profitable than ever. Anyone can over- This is a very accurate video so far. I, I really think it's very well made. This guy only has like 2.4k subs as well. I feel like he's gonna- definitely grow. The hype of games decline, and while there have been tons of games that have put their company in the financial hole or straight up bankrupted the studio, this is not Fortnite. Fortnite is the financial equivalent of having a literal money printer set up in your corporate offices. Yeah. Regardless of their lawsuits, fines, and popularity, one thing remains clear. Fortnite is nowhere near as dead as the internet would have you believe. It's important even to remember close. that the goal of this game, and most games out right now, is to make money. It's easy to get caught up in hype. It's easy to think Twitch charts are what matters, but at the end of the day, as long as it generates revenue, it is not dead in the business sense. Fortnite has found a way to generate an absolutely insane amount of revenue, and seems to know how to keep that revenue on the incline, despite often being perceived as a game on the decline. Perception is very important, but at the end of the day, the numbers don't lie. Be sure to subscribe for more Cypher Reacts. This was a good one.